Mike Phillips with AutoGeek.com, and I'm on location in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin at Lake Country Manufacturing with the technical manager of new product development, Dave Patterson. Dave, how you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for being here. You know, today we've got these really powerful gear-driven orbital polishers, and this is great because what it does is there's no such thing as pad stall when you're using tools like this. But the downside of all that power is it really punishes the pad. So you guys have brought out a new line of pads that can take the punishment. Yeah. Let's talk about these pads. Yeah, so this is our Force line of pads, which is the second version to the original hybrid series. And they utilize hybrid foam technology. So it's the same hybrid foams and the same um, types of foams that we used in the previous line of pads, but it's a redesigned, redesigned pad to uh, go with the newer polishers as everything evolves. So and what I've seen here, we've got the Flex 3401, and this is your six and a half inch. Yep. And then over here, this is this is a new entry on the model. This is the Makita PO 5000C. This is a gear-driven orbital yep. polisher, and this is your five and a half inch pad. Correct. Yep. Okay. And then over here, we've got one of these three and a half. Yeah, we have three and a half inch also. So it's a full size range from a three inch backing plate to a six inch backing plate, and then we even actually offer them in one inch, two inch for the Force Mini pads. Okay. Now, if you're not real familiar with the type of polishers we're talking about. Here's a quick example. This, this is a, what's called a free spinning orbital polisher. So if I take my hand, I can easily spin that pad. That's free spinning. It gets its power from inertia. When you turn the speed all the way up to the six and you're buffing along, the counterweight rotating has enough power to keep this pad spinning under pressure. But if you push too hard on it, the pad will simply quit stop spinning and you're not really doing anything. And for that reason, it's not gonna really punish the pad. The, 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 the gear drive system will give up before the pad will give up. Now with these new tools, for example, this is a Flex 3401. When I pull the trigger on this, you can actually see this thing rotate and oscillate. And unlike this Griot's polisher, this free spinning model, I can't just spin the pad. That's because it's gear driven. And this is where the power comes from. And with this power, what this means is no matter how hard I push down on a panel or the shape of the curve, whether it's concave or convex, this buffer is gonna rotate that pad. And what that means is you guys have had to uh, come out with a better, stronger, more powerful pad to take the punishment. Is that a good way of explaining it? Yeah, absolutely. So they, they are engineered foamless, but they're, uh, if you remember the first line of hybrid pads, they're, you know, they're a durable, robust foam is what I'd like to, to call them. They're, they're similar to your standard foams, but just on steroids a little bit, you know, has a little extra oomph to it, better durability, um, some additional features based on that chemistry or, or um, foam formulations. and directly related to performance on a gear driven machine. Now, the, the traditional hybrid pads you have, which, which I was a huge fan of, used hundreds of them in yeah. my life, buffing out cars, teaching them in our classes, but these have a little bit different shape and design to them. Let's, let's take a look at them. First of all, it's very apparent, is unlike the traditional hybrid, these now have a hole in them, and they have less of a taper than the, the, the traditional hybrid pads that you used to have. Yeah, yeah, so the old hybrid pads were were a little bit different because at, at the time that those uh, pads were on the market, the Flex 341 was the only machine um, and it utilized a five and a half inch backing plate. Yes. So the original hybrid pads were really geared towards just that machine. Yes. Um, but with additional changes in the market like Makita coming out with their machine, um, Rupes coming out with a new one, and then also the options of different sized backing plates for the 341 or for some new stuff with Flex, we decided to make a pad that was a little bit more universal that would fit on all these different types of machines. So the, the, the actual size is still very similar to what the original hybrid was. And like you're saying, the, the, the first hybrid pads, you know, the five and a half inch backing plate, uh, also you guys developed the four inch backing plate yep. adapter, and the backing of the pads were primarily designed the size at least for these backing plates. So now you've modified this, made it just a little bit bigger. And this is important because when you go to apply a, a pad to a backing plate, it has to be at a minimum, a little bit oversized, if not exact fit. And that's so a person can look at it and center it up. Yep. If it was undersized, there's no way to see where the backing is compared to the <laughs> backing plate. So you can never center it up. And it's important to center your pads as well as you can. Yeah. 
Um, along with the new machines coming out, they also have ventilated backing plates and some other features. So what we did was utilize that same center hole that wasn't in the first hybrid line um, so that we do have that capability for ventilation on those types of machines, but then also you can still center the pad really easily. Let's take a look at the backing plate on the Makita. Yeah. I think that's a good example of a ventilated backing plate. So like the backing plate on the new Makita PO 5000C, you can see there's four holes here. There's the center hole, then there's this cutout here. Yep. So you have a five inch backing plate, but you have some areas for the heat to exhaust out of. Correct. And then, of course, this is just oversized a little bit, so you could use this on a number of different tools besides just this tool. Yeah. So that's one of the benefits. It's a more universal pad for other gear-driven tools like rotary buffer. Yep. Uh, this and then whatever else comes out on the market that we haven't even heard about yet. Yeah. So now, another thing about this pad is there's a good wide range of, um, of different types. So you've got the extreme cutting, which is this gray. Yep. Okay, and this, what I like to do whenever I'm looking at a foam pad is I take my hand and I run it over the face of the pad, and I can definitely feel a sharpness here. Yep. Like, I wouldn't want to try to put a finishing wax on a show car with this, no. but I might want to use this with a compound to pull out some really deep, serious defects like deep scratches, swirls, water spots. Yeah. Um, and it's funny that you coined the term sharp because um, we didn't really have a word to describe that. And after you gave your first review or, or first initial appearance of them, um, I use that same word now to share with other people when I describe this pad. So it is very sharp, it's very firm. It's, it, it is ideal for hot and humid climates um, because it doesn't go soft like the orange pad does. Um, what's really unique about this this pad though is because it has a smaller cell, it still finishes good for being so aggressive. So um, one thing, that you can do to prep this pad if it feels too firm for you is uh, put it in some warm water and spin it out. It's gonna soften the pad up and it's gonna just prep it for you. I gotcha. And when you talk about the small uh, cell size, you're talking about the actual cell structure. So yeah. just even visually looking at this without a microscope or magnifying glass, it's very small, very tiny uh, pores or very tiny uh, cell wall structures. Yeah. So, so it's a very tight structure. Yeah, and in the past, everything has always been associated with foam buffing pads in a in your pore size, your PPI, PPI, pores per square inch. And, and with the new technology, with those um, chemicals or chemistry that's involved in the pads, uh, along with some other variables that we can control, that's not, not as apparent. So um, whether it's your density or your compression or, or just the, the additives to that foam formulation can really change the performance of them. And we typically don't rate our aggressiveness on PPI anymore. Yeah, I never did in the past. I thought no. people made a whole lot of big to do about nothing when they talked about PPI. Yeah. So what I like to do is I like to first fill across and you fill the sharpness. And as we go down the line, so this is the most aggressive, the gray. And then this would be kind of a, a light cutting or a polishing pad, depending on what chemical you're using. And then the white, this is kind of a universal white, usually is a polishing pad. Yep. So it's not an extreme cutting pad. It's not a finishing or waxing pad. It's kind of right in that sweet spot, right in the middle perfect for things like a cleaner wax or a polishing step after heavy compounding. Yeah. And again, I like to run my hand over and you can instantly tell the difference in sharpness between these two pads and this. It's much softer, not as aggressive feeling at all. Yeah, and this pad is uh, pretty unique because it's a, it's a partially closed cell foam. It is a non-reticulated foam, but because of the chemistry and because of the pore of that foam, it's not fully closed cell. So naturally, it has a partially open cell structure. So it's kind of a balance between the both, um, but it, it's been a staple in our hybrid or our hybrid foams for, for a number of years. And one of the things I've been able to tell there's something unique about that compared to the orange, the gray, the black, and the red, is when you wash it, it will retain water better than these other pads. So it's harder, it just takes a little more work to get all the rinse water out when you're washing and drying your pads. Yeah, and a, an easy roll up in a towel or it's something a, like that. It's a feature you can, you can tell when you're washing pads that's different from the rest of that white foam. Now yeah. this would be the black finishing pad. Again, just to run my hand over this, this is starting to feel pretty soft. Yeah, it's, it, it compresses a lot easier. Yep, it's really it's nice and silky. It's got a similar cell structure to your white, but it's not as firm. Um, and what's really unique about the the force black foam is it, it has a little bit more density than your standard black foam. So, I can feel that. Yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of people say, well, black black doesn't have a, a cutting ability or it doesn't have any mechanical ability, but with paired with a, a light abrasive, it's great at taking care of micromarine or finishing on soft paints or um, even jeweling with your rotary. You jeweling. Know? Now yeah. let me see this last pad. So this is your waxing pad, correct? Yep. Okay. Now when I feel this, this is really soft. Now I don't know if you know this, but a lot of times I put my makeup on with this in the morning. It, it's <laughs> so soft. 
but you, it's easily compressed. Yep. And a, a, a guy like me, like rarely would I ever take my hand to hand apply a wax or a sealant to a car. I would slap this on whatever polisher I'm using, throw the product on there and just buzz over the car as fast as I could. Because at the point you're using like a finishing wax or a finishing sealant, you don't need to spend a lot of time doing section passes or pushing down. You're just trying to put a coat on and you can do it so much faster by machine than you ever could with the human hand. Yeah. I mean, and, and technically you could apply these things with a black pad, but there are differences too. So um, obviously you know that once you put a, a, a last step product, a sealant or a wax, it's not easy to wash completely right. out. So now it is yeah. your wax pad or your yep. sealant pad. Dedicated. Yeah, so it's good to have something that's different. Um, the red foam, if you actually compare them, is softer than the black. It will compress before the black, but it, the cell structure is just a tad bit larger. So what that does is it provides a great pad for applying waxes and sealants on a, a fully finished paint correction or on a, uh, a vehicle that's just getting a cleaner wax or an all-in-one. So because those cells are just a tad bit larger, they do better at that cleaning ability. So when you go to do an all-in-one or a cleaner wax, your pad doesn't get clogged or glazed up as fast as maybe this black pad would. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, yeah. it's something I just learned from you. Oh, cool. I'll have to try this with a cleaner wax sometime. Yeah. And, and this could be, sometimes, you know, guys will talk about having a hard time finishing out on real finicky paints, soft paints, sticky paints, and this is where you need to go soft sometimes, so a softer yeah. pad and a light cleaner wax to finish out instead of a traditional polish to finish out because, you know, the benefits of a cleaner wax is not only removing a little bit of paint, but you're filling at the same time. Yeah. That's kind of what I call a cheater way of finishing out on a finicky paint job is to finish with a cleaner wax. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's so many um, people that aren't professionals or that maybe they're do-it-yourself for weekend warriors, but they aren't getting into full correction either way. So um, it's a it's perfect for them. They're always gonna get the desired result that they want. And, and, and for newbies, if you just stuck with these three colors, you couldn't hurt anything. No, no yeah, you can't really hurt anything. Yeah, they're just so safe. Yep. Now, you have one more very unique pad in this line that's not foam though. This has fibers on it. Tell us about this one, Dave. Yeah, so this is our, our hybrid foamed wool. It's similar to a purple foamed wool, except the foaming content in it is a little bit higher. So it tends to feel a little bit more dense stick together a little bit more. And this pad, um, while it's good on a rotary, uh, it was originally designed for the 3401 for a gear-driven orbital machine. And it's, um, it's great because it offers a, a significant cutting ability on this machine and you can cut almost as fast as a rotary, you know, if not the same speed. Um, but at the same time, it finishes great. Um, so for a wool pad, you could still follow up and have a, um, a two-step process depending on what type of vehicle you're working on with a wool pad as a cutting pad, which mm -hmm. is, is really, really nice. Um, the other advantage for it is it's great on a 3401 for polishing aluminum, polishing metals. Um, it, it cuts a lot of haze and defect out of aluminum and other things like that, but it still leaves a, a phenomenal finish. And that's important for anybody that's doing like a lot of the aircraft that are aluminum? Yeah. Or tunes, pontoon boats? Yep. You know, so uh, a, a dedicated uh, pad just for that. Now, one of the things that makes this unique is when I push down on this, you can feel this cushion. And somehow you guys came up with a way to encapsulate the fibers with the foam. I think that, I think that's really interesting how you did yeah. that. Yeah, so it is a patented process that we have exclusive rights to. And, and what it does is it, it it sounds impossible, but it, what it, it knits foam into the, the backing with the wool. As, it's, as it gets knitted together, there's strands of foam that get knitted with it, so it's a polyurethane. And what it does is it, you can really tell because if you would compare it to your natural um, lamb's wool pad or something like that, you can see all the fibers stick together, and when you peel them, it almost sounds like Velcro. They come apart, yeah. um, and it helps them stay straight and not just flatten. So with this pad line, you've got, you've got a, a pad that offers more cut, but also has the ability to finish out real nice. Yep. And then you've got five different levels of aggressiveness or softness or carefulness with these other different colors and foams. Yeah, and I mean, you will not find a situation that these six pads couldn't take care of. So Dave, how can people get more information or find these pads? Well, you can check us out on our website. It's www.lakecountrymfg, as in manufacturing.com. Well, I see you brought in a neglected finisher. How about we take this and give it a spin? Yeah. Literally. Yeah. <laughs>